Hey, what's up you guys? Swan here from Swan Things. And today, we're going to be talking about Exchange Traded Funds or ETFs. Now, ETFs are fast becoming one of the most popular investments out there, with well over 5 trillion US dollars invested in ETFs from all around the world. So today, I'm going to be giving you a complete breakdown on ETFs, including what they are, how they work, pros and cons of ETF investing, and how you can invest in ETFs right here in Malaysia. So without further ado, let's begin. An exchange traded fund or ETF is a stock that is traded on the stock exchange. But unlike a normal stock, which gives you a small ownership into one company, buying an ETF will make you a small owner of hundreds of different companies. The companies held under an ETF will depend on what the ETF tracks. ETFs can track things like different asset classes, industries, or markets. For example, the Spider S&P 500 ETF will buy into the 500 biggest US companies. The Spider Gold Trust tracks gold stored in vaults all over the world, and the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF holds a variety of government and commercial bonds. Just like any other stock, you can earn money from ETFs in two ways. The first is from capital gains, which of course relates to share price increases over time. Second, some ETFs will give out dividends, which from this case comes from all the dividend-paying companies held within an ETF. However, you do have to note that unlike normal stocks, an ETF will charge annual management fees. This is because someone will have to manually buy all these stocks to create the ETF. However, many ETFs are passively managed, which means that instead of relying on extensive market research and stock picking like unit trust fund managers, an ETF fund manager will aim to replicate a specific market by buying all the stocks within that market. This allows the ETF to charge you a lower fee because less effort is involved. For example, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF charges a 0.03% annual fee, compared to 1.5% of many unit trusts in Malaysia. The low fees are only one of the many advantages of ETF investing. Since ETFs are traded as a stock, it is highly liquid and can be bought and sold nearly instantly. On top of that, since ETFs hold a large number of different stocks and assets, it is a great way to diversify your portfolio even if you have a small capital. This allows you to diversify and lower your risk. On top of that, by lumping all these companies into one single ETF, the investor gains two distinct advantages. First, it saves you a ton of time and money. Because instead of going out and buying multiple different stocks, which will incur multiple brokerage fees, all you have to do is to buy one single ETF stock to give you a broad exposure. Second, ETFs are a great way for beginner investors to gain exposure to a specific market or industry. For example, if you feel that the technology sector in the US will do well in the future, but you're not really sure how to research and do the stock picking yourself, you can simply gain exposure to the entire industry by buying the Technology Select SPDR ETF, which buys into the largest tech companies in the US. When it comes to the performance of all these ETFs, obviously it's going to depend on what the ETF tracks. But one example I like to touch on is the SPDR S&P 500 ETF which is the most actively traded ETF in the world. This ETF has returned an average annual return of 13.55% in the past 10 years and 9.96% since its inception in 1993. The S&P 500 is widely known as the index to beat because statistically, less than 5% of all professionally managed funds are able to beat the S&P over the long term. So if you want to invest in a very stable index with a long history of fund beating performance, this ETF is one of the cheapest and most convenient ways to do it. 
Now that we've gone through the advantages, let's look at the disadvantages. First of all, since the ETF is manually created and the fund managers will charge an annual fee, the performance of an ETF will always be slightly lower than the stocks that it tracks. Moreover, ETFs in Malaysia will charge a higher fee compared to ETFs in the US. This is because ETFs in the US have a bigger market. And so the cost of creating these ETFs can be spread thinner. Some ETFs are also less diversified than others. You should not assume that all ETFs will give you the same amount of diversification and should take note of what the ETF tracks. Finally, if you're buying US ETFs, the dividends paid out to you will incur a 30% withholding tax. However, this tax should not have a big impact on your investments because most ETFs will rely on capital gains as opposed to dividends. However, the only exception is if you buy into dividend-heavy ETFs. For example, the ProShare S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF, which invests in the top dividend-paying companies in the S&P 500. Moving on, let's look at the three different ways that you can invest in ETFs from Malaysia, which are to buy local ETFs on Bursa Malaysia, to buy US ETFs from overseas brokerages, or through robo-advisors. First, let's look at buying ETF stocks directly on Bursa Malaysia through your local brokerage account. There are currently 19 different ETFs listed on Bursa Malaysia. These ETFs track everything from bonds, golds, Malaysian stocks, Chinese stocks, and even US stocks. However, you'll notice a different category, which are the leveraged and inverse ETFs. Now, a leveraged ETF means that instead of tracking the underlying stocks on a one-to-one -one basis, the leveraged ETF uses debt and other tools to amplify the gains and losses of an ETF. For example, the Trade Plus NYSE FANG Daily Tracker invests in the FANG stocks with a 2 times leverage. This means that if the FANG stocks go up 10%, the value of the ETF will increase 20%. On the flip side, if the FANG stock drops 10%, the ETF will drop 20%. So you can see how you're getting higher risk, higher return through leverage. The inverse ETF, on the other hand, simply tracks the stocks in the opposite direction. For example, in the Trade Plus NYSE FANG Daily Inverse Tracker ETF, if the FANG stocks move up 10%, the ETF will drop 10% and vice versa. And so you should only invest in an inverse ETF if you think that the stocks held by the ETF will fall in the future which means that the value of your ETF will go up. Now, before you go ahead and buy all these ETFs, you do have to take note that ETFs in Malaysia will charge a slightly higher annual management fee compared to US ETFs. On top of that, another problem commonly encountered in Malaysia is that ETFs have a very low trade volume. A low trade volume just means that there are not many people buying and selling these ETFs on the market, which may mean that when you want to sell off your ETF, you might have a hard time finding a buyer on the market. However, because ETFs are not structured the same way as stocks, it runs in a different set of rules. Even if there's a low trade volume on the retail market, ETFs will gain additional liquidity from market makers in the secondary market. To put it into simple words, it simply means that even if there aren't many buyers on the stock exchange, the market makers will still step in and buy and sell ETFs with you. This means that as long as the stocks within an ETF are actively traded, liquidity shouldn't be a big issue. Since the local ETFs are quite limited in choice and also charge a higher fee, you may want to explore US ETFs, which are some of the most actively traded ETFs in the world. However, to purchase a US ETF, you would have to open up an overseas brokerage account. Some of the ones that I do recommend are TD Ameritrade, 
and Trade Station Global Interactive Brokers. Although I do like to buy US ETFs directly through these overseas brokerages, the process to sign up for all these accounts is troublesome and the transaction costs can be quite expensive. For example, you'll have to sign up for a Singaporean brokerage account and oftentimes you will need a Singaporean bank account to transfer your Malaysian ringgit into Singaporean dollars and then the brokerage will transfer that into US dollars. The entire process will incur transaction and exchange fees. And so you really need to have a large enough capital to make this process worthwhile. So if none of the options above seems appealing to you, the easiest way to invest in ETFs will be through robo-advisors like Stashaway or Wahi Invest. When you invest with a robo-advisor, the platform will help you purchase a number of different ETFs according to your risk profile. For example, the Stashaway 36% risk index will put your money into a mixture of different US and international ETFs as well as REIT and gold ETFs. Unlike the two options above, you do not get to pick exactly which ETF you would like to invest in. However, the upside is that the robo-advisor will handle everything for you. All you have to do is pick a risk level and deposit your money, and the platform will automatically help you purchase a number of different ETFs on your behalf. While robo-advisors do charge an annual fee for their services, I personally find that these fees are quite fair and competitive. So all these robo-advisors actually provide a pretty good compromise between low fees and also convenience of investing in many different types of ETFs. And that's all I have for you today. Now just to recap, I think that ETFs are a great investment for beginners and seasoned investors alike to give you low-cost risk diversification and a broad exposure to some of the best performing indexes in the world. If you found this video useful, smash that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more investing content. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions at all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!